got to make sure my mic is working. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Sarah. I'm one of the educators here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and I'm so excited you're joining us today because we are going to talk about one of my favorite things to talk about, something or an animal that I could probably talk about for hours and hours, but don't worry, we'll keep it to just 30 minutes today, but you may have guessed it, we are going to be talking about sharks today. Now, we are going to talk about lots of cool things about sharks. We're also going to take a moment and say hi to our turtle. This is Thea right here. He's waking up, maybe just like you're waking up to say good morning. But we are going to try and focus on sharks today. And while we're exploring, I would love to talk about what you want to know about sharks. So I've got sort of an agenda plan, but I am happy to be flexible. And if you have questions about sharks or observations you want to share or specific sharks you want to talk about, we would love to hear from you. Now, I'm not alone here in our studio. I've got Tina and Sophie, and they're helping control everything you see behind me. And Tina just put up this number. So if you'd like to ask questions, share observations, tell me your favorite shark, you can go ahead and text us at 562-286-1838. And then if you're watching this program live, so it is 9 a.m. on June 26th, you can go ahead and text us. But if you're watching later, we'd still love to be able to answer your questions. But we are going to ask that you email us at this email right below that phone number, live at lbaop.org. Now, you'll see this phone number up here. It might go away if it's blocking our view, but it will come back. So at any time during our program that you want to text us, we'd love to hear from you. All right. You ready to explore? Let's go. So I'm going to step off the screen because this view that we're looking at right here is really cool. It's kind of on an angle. That means one of our animals bumped into this camera. But this camera is in one of our exhibits here at the aquarium. And so what we are watching is live. Now that's really cool. We have cameras in about six or seven of our exhibits here at the aquarium. And that way you can check in on our animals, even if you can't make it here to visit us. So we are watching Shark Lagoon. So if I walked outside right now, I'd be looking at the same thing that you are looking at here. So let's start to make some observations. Now, have you heard that word observation before? You might be familiar with it. Maybe it's a new word. But observation is a tool that scientists use when they're learning or studying something. Now, what I think is really cool about observations is you don't need to know anything about the thing that you are observing. So maybe sharks are a brand new animal to you and you don't really know much about that animal. You can still be a scientist and you can still make observations. Because what we do when we make observations is we use our eyes and we just describe what it is that we're seeing. So if I look in here, I can see some sharks and I see some fish swimming, that's an observation. Observations can be animals you see, they can be colors or shapes or parts of the habitat or home that we're looking at. So let's take a moment and make some observations. Now you can make some observations, you can think them in your brain. If you've got some paper, you can write them down. If you're watching with friends or someone in your family or even your pet, you can share your observations with them. Or you can even text us at that text sign 562 2861838, you can text us your observations. So let's think for a moment, what do we notice here in Shark Lagoon? We mentioned already that I saw some sharks, but something else I noticed is that there's a couple different sharks and they look different. Not all the sharks look the same. Did you notice that too? Excellent. And we'll talk a little bit about the different sharks we have in here in Shark Lagoon in a little bit. What else do you notice? I see some colors. Do you see some red? Yeah, over here, I see some red right here, and then some greens. Maybe this is kind of like a bright green and then a darker green. Oh, hello, shark. And then some orange right here. So lots of different colors in here, too. See anything else? I noticed Theo in the back. Looks like he's kind of crawling along. <gasps> I see right here. What do you notice right here? That's right, a stingray. We've got two stingrays in here. And as big as this stingray looks, we have an even larger stingray here in Shark Lagoon. We'll see if we can spot her maybe a little bit later. Excellent. Those are some wonderful observations. Now, what we're looking at here in Shark Lagoon is a coral reef habitat. So all these structures here, and then over here, that is coral. That's what makes up this habitat for these animals. Now, this being a coral reef, it tells us something about where these sharks live. Corals like warm water. So that tells us that these sharks also like warm water because this is their home. 
So these are what we call tropical species or tropical sharks. They live someplace where the water is nice and cozy and warm, not like here in our ocean backyard in Southern California, where our water is a little bit chilly, but somewhere nice and warm that has coral. And it's pretty shallow because corals are mostly found in shallow water. And so these sharks, they like to live amongst a shallow coral reef. Oh, here is our biggest stingray. We waited and she appeared. There she is. Excellent. So we've made some observations of Shark Lagoon here, but what I want to do is make sure that we know what a shark is. So I'm going to have Tina put up a picture, and the minute you see that picture, I want you to shout out what animal it is that you see in that picture. That's right. It's a shark. Excellent. Now, when we see this picture, our brain tells us it's a shark, right? We recognize that animal as a shark. But what our brain is actually doing, it's recognizing different parts of this animal, and then all put together, it tells us that's a shark. So I want to break it down so that we know what it is exactly that makes a shark a shark. Because a shark might have some things that are similar to other animals in the ocean, but it's also got some things that are different. And the way that I want to do this is I think it's easiest to draw a shark. So if you're watching along and you have some paper, whether it's construction paper or blank paper or scratch paper, and you want to draw along, I'm going to draw on a whiteboard. So if you have a little whiteboard or a chalkboard, anything you have around, if you would like to draw along with us, you are more than welcome to follow along as we draw a shark. Now, we like to start with the body shape of the shark. So take a look at the shark. This one here is called a gray reef shark. It's one of the kind of sharks that we have here. But take a look. If we were to cover up this fin and this, oh, right here, this fin here and the tail fin, and just look at the body, what shape would you use to describe the shape of that body? Sometimes I hear kind of like an oval or it's kind of a pointy oval. And I agree, it's kind of like an oval that's turned on its side, squished a little bit, but then it's pointy on either end. I think it kind of looks like a football or a lemon. So that's the shape that I'm going to draw. I'm going to go over to my document camera. And I'm going to draw that sort of football-y lemon shape. Just like that. Mine's a little bit more rotund, if you will, a little thicker this way than that gray reef shark. So I think it looks more like a lemon. But same thing, a lemon or football shape. Now, there's a big word for this shape when we're talking about sharks and fish. We call it fusiform. I'll write that down. Fusiform. And that fancy word fusiform just means this sort of oval with that pointy end shape of their body. So the, this shark and most shark, I won't say all sharks, but most sharks' bodies are that fusiform shape. All right, let's go back to our gravy shark and see what else would we need to add onto our fusiform or our lemon or football shaped body to help make our shark a shark? Because there are other fish in the ocean that have a fusif shape, fusiform shaped body, and there are other animals whose bodies, I could argue, are kind of fusiform shaped, but those animals aren't sharks. So what do we need to add? Hmm, I can see lots of things. What are you all thinking? Excellent, I agree, it needs fins. So we've got a couple fins. We've got this fin up here. We've got one down here and on the other side. We've got some little fins here and then their tail fin right here. So we're going to go through each of those fins because this shark uses their fins to swim and it needs all its fins, but they all work in a little bit different way and then put together allow our shark to swim. So if we go to our drawing, I'm going to start with that one on the top. This one is called the dorsal fin their top fin. So you can go ahead and draw, or you can just make a dorsal fin on the top. Now the dorsal fin helps with balance. So think about if you are standing up and you try and stand on one leg, you can't really see my legs, but I'm standing on one foot right now. If you try and stand on one foot and then you get kind of wobbly, how do you make yourself stable again? You put down your other foot. That helps you balance. And our shark, they don't have feet, but they're going to use this dorsal fin to help them balance. So this fusiform shaped body, when it moves through the water, if it doesn't have any fins, if it just looks like that lemon or football shape, if it were to move through the water, it would move in a spiral motion. Think about throwing a football. Now that's something that I can't do very well, so it never spins in a spiral, but if you throw a football correctly, it moves in that spiral motion. Now sharks, they don't wanna swim in that spiral motion. That would make them a little bit seasick. So they use their fins to help them balance, and that dorsal fin helps keep them upright. 
Now, when we look at different sharks, we'll notice that that dorsal fin might be a little bit different shape. Sometimes it's very much of a triangle. Sometimes it's kind of curved and then a straight line. Sometimes it's really tall and sometimes it's really small. It just depends on the type of shark. Now that dorsal fin, besides helping with balance, also tells us something about how that shark swims. It's gonna tell us if that shark can swim really fast or goes maybe a little bit more slow. So our sharks that have that really big, tall dorsal fin, they're gonna be faster swimming sharks. And then the sharks that have more of the sort of curved dorsal fin that maybe isn't very big and pointy, which I'll show you in just a moment, those sharks are gonna be slower swimmers. So it tells us a little bit more information than just that it helps with balance. It can tell us how fast that shark moves. Now, the next fin I'm gonna do are the side or pectoral fins. So we've got our dorsal fin, you can make your dorsal fin. And then if you put your arms to the side, kind of like airplane wings, these are your pectoral or your side fins. So I'm gonna draw one here, and then I'm gonna draw a little one because that one's on the other side. Now those pectoral fins, those are gonna help with steering. So in a, just a moment, not yet, but in a moment, we're gonna go back to Shark Lagoon. And when we go back to Shark Lagoon, there's a couple things I want you to look for. And one of them is to see if they really move those pectoral fins or if they kind of stick out straight like airplane wings and don't move them too much. Because they're really just used for steering and they act pretty different than we might think of maybe the side fins from a fish. And then the last fin, the last main fin, there are the little ones, is the tail fin. Now the tail fin also looks different depending on the type of shark. Sometimes they just have one lobe on the top and no bottom triangle. Sometimes the bottom triangle can be really long with a sort of medium sized lower one. Sometimes it can look more equal. It just depends on the shark. And that also tells us about how that shark, how fast that shark moves. But my question to you, we're gonna go to Shark Lagoon and I want you to look at which fin do they use to move forward? Which one is moving the most of their fins? And of course, as I say that, all the sharks disappear from our view. All right, we've got a, one moving over here. Here, this one's coming too. So take a look at those side fins and see what kind of movement you see in them. And then take a look at their tail fins and see what you notice there. All right, let's give it a moment. Let our sharks make their way in front of our camera. We like to joke here that the minute we talk about an animal, it likes to disappear from our view. Oop, but there we saw a little bit. That's the tail of our zebra shark. Oh, here, perfect. There we go, now they're cooperating. So if you notice, when the sharks are swimming, their side or pectoral fins stick out straight and they don't really move. They're used for steering. So they might lean to one side or the other to help them kind of steer, but they're not flapping them or moving them like a fish would. They keep them pretty straight, but their tail is a fin that they're gonna use to swim forward. And so they move it side to side. So you can go ahead and clap your hands together and make a shark fin or tail and move it side to side. And that is what is going to propel them to move forward in the water. There's our zebra shark, and we can see the tail moving side to side. And here's another zebra shark, and we'll see it moving the tail side to side. Now that's a good example of a shark that just has that upper lobe to their tail, whereas our gray reef shark right here has that two pieces to its tail. Excellent. So if we go back to our picture really quick, we have our shark's fusiform or lemon-shaped body. We have their top or dorsal fin, their pectoral or their side fins. And then this tail fin is called a caudal, not cuddle, like it's snuggly, but a caudal fin. But top fin, side fin, tail fin works just as well to understand or to know the fins of our shark. All right, I think the shark's still missing a couple things. And one thing I know it's missing is the eye. Now, if we look at a couple different sharks, I'll have Tina put up just a couple different sharks, any ones, we can take a look at their eyes and we'll notice their eyes look really different. Now for this gray reef shark, I think their eye kind of looks like a button, like for a jacket, right? But if we look at a different shark, excellent. So this is our close-up of our zebra shark and take a look at its eye. It looks really different. And maybe we can look at a white shark. Cause that's kind of like the eye that I drew. You might be familiar with our white shark and take a look at its eye. Basically it looks like it's just a big black circle. So the eyes of our sharks differ just like the fins differ and they differ on depending on where the shark is gonna live. So not so much based on movement, like their fins are, but where the shark lives. Some sharks live in the open ocean, and so their eyes need to adjust to 
varying amounts of light. If it's they're towards the surface, if they're deeper, if they've got more sort of area to be able to see around. Whereas some sharks, they live in the shallows and their eyes might be different because they don't need to take in as much light. So it just depends on the type of shark, what their eye is gonna look like. But even looking at our shark here, we added an eye. What else do you notice on the shark that maybe we need to add to make our shark look more like a shark? Is there anything else that is striking or stands out to you? Well, I notice pretty big right here, these lines. What are these? Any idea? That's right, those are the shark's gills. That is how a shark breathes. So sharks, they are not like mammals like us. They don't have lungs. They can't breathe air. They breathe oxygen that's in the water and they pull water into their mouth. Ooh, their mouth, that's another thing we need to add for our shark. They pull water into their mouth and then it goes over their gills. So I'm gonna draw some lines for our shark. Now, our shark is gonna have five gills and that's true. Most sharks have five gill slits. There are some exceptions. In science, we try and avoid saying all or always or every animal because there's exceptions a lot of the time. So we say most sharks have five gill slits, but there are exceptions like the, <clears throat> excuse me, the six gill shark has, you guessed it, six gills. And the seven gill shark has seven gills. Excellent. But most sharks have five. And then I mentioned the mouth. So let's add a mouth into my shark. Mine's a happy shark. But that mouth is definitely missing something. What do you think goes inside the mouth? That's right, it needs its chompers, it needs some teeth. So I'm gonna draw some triangle teeth. Now we like to joke that shark's favorite shapes are triangles because they've got triangles all over their body. But even their teeth can be different shapes. And we'll take a close look at some shark teeth and explore how teeth can be different. Excellent. Now this is my favorite shark smile. This is Big Guy. He's a shark who used to live here at the aquarium. And he has, I have to argue, one of the nicest smiles I've ever seen. Do you all agree? You're probably rolling your eyes at me while watching. But we love Big Guy. And Big Guy has this giant mouth full of teeth. Now take a look at these teeth. What observations can we make about them? What stands out? Now, something I think is kind of funny is Big Guy's teeth stick out so much that he can't even close his mouth. So think about when we are not talking, our mouth is closed. Or when we chew, we open and close our mouth. But Big Guy, his teeth stick out so much, he could never close his mouth, which means he was always smiling, which I think is wonderful. Now, I also noticed that Big Guy has rows and rows and rows of teeth. Do you see that? There's one here, and then another row behind it behind it and behind it and all along has rows of teeth. Now think about for us, you might have your baby teeth still, maybe you haven't lost a tooth or maybe you lost one tooth and you have another tooth growing in. So we lose one set of teeth, right? When we're little, we lose one set of teeth and then we grow our adult teeth and then we're not supposed to lose those. Now sometimes things happen and those teeth might fall out, but for the most part, I still have the teeth that I've had for years and years and years. And those are my permanent teeth. But sharks, they go through teeth all the time. A shark can have 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. That number is three zero comma zero zero zero. It's a very big number. But sharks, their skeleton, what's inside their body is different from ours. So if you think about your skeleton, everyone can give me a thumbs up or wave your hands in the air or say hi to the TV or put your arms out. All of these movements we can do because our skeleton is made of bone and that gives us structure. Now sharks, they do have a skeleton, but their skeleton is made of something different. It's made of cartilage. Now you may have heard of cartilage before because even though our skeleton is made of bone, there are a couple parts of our skeleton that is made of cartilage. Go ahead and point now. If you have an idea where we have cartilage in our bodies, go ahead and point. You can point to your nose, excellent. You can point to your ears and even in between your joints. So where your elbow bends, that's a joint. And in between our joints, we have cartilage. And cartilage is very soft. If you squish your nose, it's really squishy. Or if you wiggle your ear, it's pretty squishy, right? We can fold over our ear without breaking it. So cartilage is much more flexible than bone. And sharks, their teeth are set into that cartilaginous skeleton. So they're set into a much softer material than our teeth, which are set into our jaw, which is made of bone. And what that means is that every couple of bites of food a shark takes, their teeth 
get wiggly and loose and fall out. But if that happened and they only had maybe one or two sets of teeth, after one or two meals, sharks would be toothless. It'd be like grandpa shark with all of our sharks in the ocean. And while that would be very endearing to see a lot of grandpa sharks without their teeth, that wouldn't make for very good sharks in the ocean. It would make it hard for them to catch their food. And so sharks, they have basically an unlimited supply of teeth, as we can see here in Big Guy's beautiful smile. Now, something else to notice about Big Guy's teeth are the way that they're shaped. Look, they're really long and skinny, and they curve inward. I guess they curve that way. They curve inward, and that helps Big Guy catch his food. So a shark like Big Guy is called a sand tiger shark, and they're not the fastest of swimming. They're pretty big. They're about 10 feet. They live in coral reefs and lagoons, and they feed on fish. Now, fish can be really fast, and they can be really slippery. Most fish have a layer of slime that covers their body, and that slime acts as protection, and it also helps prevent them from getting caught by animals like a shark. But big eyes, curved teeth, help grab a hold of that fish and hold onto it so the fish can't slip out. So their teeth are built specially for what they're going to eat. Now that's just one set of teeth from a shark. But as I mentioned, just like the fins, just like the eyes, the teeth of shark can be different based on what that shark is going to eat. So if we go back to my drawing really quick, just to sum it up, and then we'll look at some more teeth. So my shark can swim with its fins. It can breathe with its gills. It can see. It can eat with its mouth. I'm going to add a little bit of a nose because they do have a nose to smell. Now their nose is just used for smelling. It's not used for breathing the way our nose is because sharks use their gills. And I think that looks like a pretty good shark. What do you all think? Excellent. Now, if you did draw a shark and you'd like to share your shark with us, you are, of course, welcome to take a picture and text us or email us. We love to see your shark drawings. But what I'm going to do for the moment is I'm going to put my shark away and I'm going to grab some more teeth from a shark for us to look at. Now, I'm going to grab a jaw that looks very, very different from Big Guy's. Now, as I mentioned, Big Guy, that sand tiger shark, is about, can be about 10, 8 to 10 feet long. And so that mouth seemed pretty big. Now, the shark whose jaw I'm going to put up now is also maybe the same length of a sand tiger shark. Also gets about 8 to 10 feet. But take a look at this mouth. Now, if I had Big Guy's jaw, I don't know that it would actually fit on my document camera right here. But this mouth clearly can fit. Now, I'm going to zoom in so we can take a closer look at the teeth on this mouth. Focus for a minute, change the lighting, make it easier for us to see. There we go. Take a look at these teeth. What do you notice? I'm going to put my fingernail right next to it so you can see for scale. Oh my gosh, my finger is so big. But look how many teeth would fit right on top of my finger. So these teeth are really, really tiny. Now, for comparison, I have a jaw. It's not from a sand tiger shark. It's from a mako shark, which is a little bit smaller, but its teeth are very similar. So mako sharks are maybe six to seven feet long, I would think. Maybe. Um, but their jaw is much bigger. So I'm going to show you as a comparison these mouths right next to each other. So, uh, you know what? I'll put it right inside. Take a look at that. So the shark that's mouth that belongs to this mouth is maybe a 10-foot shark. And this shark is a little bit smaller, but look how much bigger its mouth is. And that's just because it depends on what that shark is going to be eating. So the shark whose mouth looks like this is our zebra shark. Let's take a look at our zebra shark. Excellent. So this is one of our sharks here. We have, I think, three or four zebra sharks here at the aquarium, and we saw them swimming in shark lagoons. But take a look at the front of their body. So it's sort of like the same view of what we were looking at with Big Guy, but this zebra shark, their mouth is on the bottom. So think about it. Big Guy's mouth is right in front, but our zebra shark's mouth is kind of angled down. Think of oh, another good smile, I have to say. Look at that. Adorable smile. And those little circles, those are their nostrils. But we're focusing on the mouth and their teeth. So zebra sharks, their mouth sort of angles downward instead of in front of them. So think about Big Guy is swimming with his mouth in front. He's going to catch food right in front of him. But if your mouth is on the bottom, is down below, do you think it's easy to catch food right in front of you if your mouth is here? No, it's going to take a lot of energy because if you're going to catch food in front, 
You have to turn your body upward to catch the food. And that takes a lot of effort. And sharks, as powerful as they are, they like to save all their energy until they actually need to use it. And so getting food that's not easily caught is not something that they're interested in. And so a zebra shark is going to look for food below it. So they're going to find food that lives in the sand. Let's go back to Shark Lagoon for a moment. Perfect. Look at that beautifully lazy zebra shark right here. Not lazy, actually. They're just conserving energy. Zebra sharks have a special thing on their body called a spiracle, which is a little hole behind their eye, and it pumps water and allows them to sit on the bottom of their habitat and take a rest. But it's also the bottom of their habitat is where they're going to find their food. And so this zebra shark whose mouth is angled down when they're looking for food is going to dig through the sand and try and find something living in the sand. Now, if we're trying to figure out what a zebra shark eats, do you think there's a lot of fish that like to burrow in the sand? There might be some flat fish, but not a lot of fish like to hang out in the sand. We see more fish swimming around like these fish right here. So the zebra shark is going to eat whatever they can find in the sand. And they like to eat crunchy things. They like to eat things like crustaceans, like shrimp or crab, or maybe some clams or scallops if they can find them. So they feast on crunchy things. Now, if we think back to what their teeth look like, those tiny little teeth, they're very sharp, but they're very little. And that helps them eat those crunchy things. Because if they had really long teeth like Big Guy, and they tried to eat something that was crunchier, what do you think might happen to their teeth? It would break, right? Those really long teeth eating something crunchy, it might break their teeth. And even though they have ones to replace it, it's not really helpful to have all these broken teeth in their mouth. So if they're long, pointy teeth, they're going to be eating softer things like fish. But smaller, uh, pointy teeth are going to be eating crunchy things like our zebra shark eats those crustaceans. Excellent. We've got a couple minutes left, and I'm going to bring up one more jaw. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different. If I can find it. Aha. Now this one is kind of the same size as that zebra shark, right? They're kind of similar in size. But take a look at the difference. What do you notice is different about these two jaws? The similarity is the size, but if I zoom in, we've got those tiny pointy teeth. But look at this. Do those even look like, oh, hold on. There we go. Do those even look like teeth? They don't really. But these are the teeth from a stingray. Now, you might be wondering, this is a shark program. Why are we even talking about stingrays? But sharks and rays, they are related. They're cousins. They both have that cartilaginous skeleton, that skeleton made of that squishy cartilage, like what we have in our nose and in our ear. Now, a ray's mouth is very much on the bottom of their body. And their teeth look like this. Now, they're really hard, but they are flat. So think about that zebra shark who had those tiny teeth that were sharp, and they could eat crunchy things. Rays can eat even crunchier things. They can eat really hard things. So what a ray likes to eat is they'll eat things with shells, things like clams and mussels. Now, think about most sharks, even the zebra shark trying to eat something with a really hard shell, almost like what a rock feels like would definitely break their teeth. But rays, like our bat rays here in this picture, with their mouth right there, with those flat teeth, they can crunch up that shell. And now they don't want to eat the shell. They're actually going to spit out those pieces of shell, but they want that squishy animal that lives on the inside. And so having those flat teeth, they're able to grind up their that shell, spit out the pieces, and eat the squishy animal on the inside. Excellent. So I'm going to have Tina put us back in Shark Lagoon as we wrap up today because we are about out of time but i hope you enjoyed exploring what makes a shark a shark and a couple different teeth of our shark we learned that even though these are all sharks some of them even live in the same place they are very different based on their fins which can tell us about how fast they're swimming or the way they move looking at their eyes and even their teeth can tell us a little bit about more information about these sharks and help us learn a little bit more about them all right everyone we are going to say goodbye I hope you enjoyed exploring with us today. Join us on Wednesday for more Aquarium Online Academy. Have a good day. Bye, everyone.